Good morning, everybody. My name is Peter, uh, Peter Overton. It's uh, wonderful to be uh, with you today as we continue to journey through the drama of this Easter journey. Yesterday, uh, we reflect on Jesus washing uh, the feet of his disciples. The image on the news this morning is Pope Francis this morning uh, from his wheelchair washing people's feet. It's beautiful, isn't it? An image that speaks of service. So today I'm taking you or you are being led on a journey called the seven moments. And so we'll sing, but predominantly reflect. And this might just be a key moment on the journey towards Easter Day. Tony Campolo used to always say, it's Good Friday, but Sunday is a coming but we need to have the wholeness of that, don't we? Along the way, we have walked with Christ. Along this way, we have shared his table through Lent. Along this way, he has washed our feet. Along this way, we approach the cross. Along this way, we fear the path. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let us stand and sing, O sacred hint sore wounded.
may be seated. Let us pray together. On this day, we recall the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear John's account, we focus on seven moments during the day. And as darkness still seeks to conquer the light, O oh God, we will pause to reflect on our own sin and that of the sin of the world. At the end of each reading, we will keep silence <coughs> and we will ponder on the prevailing darkness of the day. This took me back to my first church. Thank you for whoever, whoever prepared this. Because in my first congregation, the Albion Church of Christ in Brisbane, I'd traveled there having been ordained in Melbourne. There was a lady who lived in a worker's cottage. Her husband had died, his name was Harold. She was a very working class woman. The previous minister of the church that I went to, he had fallen down the stairs. They'd collapsed on, his, on her house. She was very frugal. She used to make one of these out of the rose garden in her garden. And the remarkable thing was that there would be a white cloth. Everything was stark. There was, of course, a cross. There was no internet in those days. But every time I came in in the six years I was there, there was blood around this. and blood on the red cloth. Would you pray with me? God of the daytime and the nighttime, God of light and darkness, God of joy and sorrow, we worship you. Through you alone, we are able to know that even in the darkness hours, hope is present through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So we have our first reading from John, chapter 19, 1 to 7. Just be aware I'm reading all these. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers made a crown out of the thorny branches and put it on his head. Then they put a purple robe on him and came to him and said, Long live the king of the Jews. And they went up and slapped him. Pilate went back out at once and said to the crowd, Look, I will bring him out here to you to let you see that I cannot find any reason to condemn him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, look, here 
is the man. When the chief priests and the temple guards saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, you take him then and crucify him. I find no reason to condemn him. The crowd answered back, we have a law that says he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here is the man, the Roman prefect said, as he offered Jesus to the crowd. No name now for this nuisance man whose silent threat causes such alarm. Yet even the no name has become a title for paintings, sculptures, and verse over the centuries. A no-name title becoming his title and a no-name hanging over soon to become his fate. The no-name was the word made flesh. we enter the second moment. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back into the palace and asked Jesus, where do you come from? But Jesus did not answer. Pilate said to him, you will not speak to me? Remember, I have the authority to set you free and also to have you crucified. Jesus answered, You have authority over me only because it was given to you by God. So the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a worse sin. When Pilate heard this, he tried to find a way to set Jesus free. But the crowd shouted back, if you set him free, that means that you are not the emperor's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king is a rebel against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he took Jesus outside and sat down on the judge's seat in the place called the stone pavement. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Together, Lord, have 
mercy. The third moment, Golgotha. So they took charge of Jesus. He went out carrying his cross and came to the place of the skull, as it is called. In Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and they also crucified two other men, one on each side with Jesus between them. Pilate wrote a notice and had it put on the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This is what he wrote. Many people read it because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. The chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate said, what I have written stays written. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. The article was finished and passed to the editor to seek his approval. Within a few minutes, the call came. Are you sure you want to say this? She said. It's what happened, the reporter replied. Those were the words that were used. but they don't quite reflect our brand. It doesn't fit in with our readers. Maybe you could say it seemed or it appeared that. She was maybe unclear, but she wasn't. She was clear about what was said and when it occurred, and what was meant by it. Very clear. OK, the editor responded. If it goes wrong, I'll take the flack. Let it be as you have written. Pilate, in a moment of bravery, insists on what has been written. No fudging. The King of the Jews is who Jesus is. Even in the face of the crowd, sometimes it has to be said as it is. Even when the mood of the crowd threatens, Sometimes it needs to be said as it is. As we remain seated, 
Let us sing when I survey the wondrous cross. The fourth moment, casting lots. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
the fifth moment. Here is your mother. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there, so he said to his mother, He is your son. Then he said to the disciple, She is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Can you pause for a moment and reflect on the words that you have heard to and from the cross? The ugly words, the embracing words. Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. In a moment, all can change. That moment of fearful, angelic promise. That moment of Bethlehem's birth pain and first nursing for Mary. That moment of fleeing that moment of apparent rejection, that moment so, so many moments with him. And now this moment, this moment, this moment right now, this handing over as the care given to him from birth to death is now received from him. And in this new moment, for us and all the world, a new home for him and a new home for you and for me. The sixth moment finished. Jesus knew that by now everything had been completed. And in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there full of cheap wine. So a sponge was soaked in the wine, put on a stalk of hyssop and lifted up to his lips. Jesus drank the wine and said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. <coughs> Finished. It's such a final word, isn't it? But what is ever really finished? What is ever really accomplished, completed, except life itself? A race is run, a record set, only served to herald the next attempt. A new champion, a holder of the prize. But once for all, a death of life, an obscuring, uh, an obscuring of light, bringing darkness in its wake as a moment of completion is echoed with finality. Finished. The end. Extinguished light, but only still a brighter dawn. In the drama of Good Friday, we have now reached the seventh moment. Then the Jewish authorities asked Pilate to allow them to break the legs of the men who had been crucified and to take the bodies down from the crosses. They requested this because it was Friday and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses on the Sabbath since the coming Sabbath was especially holy. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man, then the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged his spear into Jesus' side, and at once blood and water poured out. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. We have journeyed through seven moments of the ordinary. Crowds, fear, power, inhumanity made ordinary. And so it continues as those with power quash unrest, break limbs, execute troublemakers and instill fear. As the chilling ordinariness of few shoes and spectacles piled high, whilst those who had chosen and bought them 
clean them and warn them are nameless numbers in a place of every death. No names, each loved by God, but treated as less than human by others who, being loved by God themselves, risk their very humanity. As we pause and we wonder, in seven moments of ordinary violence, would we be different? Other days will soon come. The deep, deep sorrow of a garden visit met with a name. A fear-filled room gathering an unexpected visitor. A sad path home becoming a way back to hope on the Emmaus Road. A picnic transformed into a place of restitution. But for now, the candle is extinguished. For now, the darkness prevails. Would you pray with me? Our God, we pray for those for whom the terrifying has become the ordinary for the victims of warfare, for children and mothers unable to live in their homes that are their own, for fighters who have become immune to the cries of others, and for politicians who hear only praise and miss the voice of the silent and the needy and the vulnerable and the refugee. We pray for ourselves if we have become immune to those who suffer those who have no name, who walk past us on the street, who may just count for little. We ask for forgiveness for those times when we failed to step up and speak or act. Lord of the cross, together here our prayer. We give thanks for those who remind us that even in the shadows of pain, humanity may shine forth. We give thanks for those who care for the dead and the dying and for those who bring hope. Lord of the cross, together hear our prayer. Lord of the cross, in you alone do we find our hope, even with or when hope is gone. So we have 
a closing reading. After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret, because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body, so Joseph went and took it away. Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph, taking with him about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of mirth and aloes. The two men took Jesus' body, wrapped it in linen cloths, with the spices according to the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. Did you get that? He was a Jew. There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death. And in there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was the day before the Sabbath and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. When all hope has left, friends, still watch and wait. When darkness prevails, friends, still let us search for pinpricks of light. When the road is hidden, friends, May we still seek the guide, the ground of our being, the way of the cross. Christ of the cross, hold us in these moments, even the moments we face when we arrive home this day. As we also wait for a garden vision, a mealtime revelation after a long, long journey of darkness, a locked room blessing. Maybe even a late side renewal. So we sing a hymn, Were You There? We won't be singing the last verse. But today, at the conclusion of the song, the hymn, we will leave quietly. And may we go in peace and look for those pinpricks of hope. Amen. Let us stand.